I really love my data. <laughs> I really do. My data is hilarious. Like this incredible, wild, unpredictable display of descriptions and thoughts and emotions and experiences, sensations in the body. Just all of it, this incredible grand display of perfect, pure benefit. That's it really. <laughs> the mind is so powerful, so potent just pouring forth this incredible display, unstoppable, unstopped, a seamless flow of perfect benefit. And all we need to do is just relax and allow everything to be exactly as it is, aligning ourselves perfectly with this reality, this reality of the benefit of all. Now, the invitation here and the suggestion is to stop thinking for a moment, and identify for yourself the intelligence that is naturally present. The intelligence by which you're hearing these words, the intelligence that knows you're here, that is experiencing everything you're experiencing, and identify that intelligence. And then to recognize that inseparable from this intelligence and the dynamic energy of this intelligence is all of this data, all of this experience, thoughts, emotions, sensations, anything we can perceive, label or describe, it's just, just data. The key point and the instruction here is to take short moments of identifying and recognizing this intelligence that you've just noticed amidst the flow of this wild un and unpredictable display of data. So to allow the mind to think as it will whilst recognizing that all of the thoughts, all of the descriptions, all of the sensations are appearing within and as this, as this place, as this space of perfect benefit. And what happens then is that everything opens out, everything settles in its own place of already perfect benefit we see that the effort to try and control the way that we're thinking, to try and manage our data streams, to manipulate them, to try and, look, to, to try and make them look in a certain way, is just completely unnecessary. All of the ideas we had about anything just relax and settle out. And all that's left is this bright shine of mind, recognizing that all of this data is the bright shine of mind, inseparable from it. Now my data are just, um, just out of control. <laughs> and that's wonderful. So when I'm walking along the street, there's all kinds of thoughts just popping into my mind. All kinds of things, some acceptable, some completely unacceptable. Some that fit into categories of spiritual, that's a nice spiritual thought. Oh, no. Just called someone or thought someone was an idiot, that's not very spiritual, is it? That's obviously a sign that uh, open intelligence has gone away. But what we have here is this beautiful practice of short moments repeated many times. And in the practice of short moments, of just stopping the describing and allowing everything to be as it is, we get to see for ourselves that every single datum, every experience, only occurs in, of, as and through wide open, sky-like intelligence and nowhere else. Having the thought, I love you, and having the thought, you're an idiot, are equal and even appearances within open intelligence. They appear spontaneously and they resolve naturally without leaving a trace, like the flight path of a bird in the sky. Now this does not need to be thought about. Ooh. Oh, that's challenging. <laughs> but it can be directly experienced. Each time you relax and stop describing and identify open intelligence, and if you forget what that is, you just stop thinking for a moment and notice it. Identify that intelligence again. And then the next thought arises, I love you, you're an idiot. And open intelligence hasn't gone anywhere. Both of those thoughts, both of those descriptions, arise equally and evenly within this vast expanse. 
And like reflections in a crystal ball, although the reflections may change and be this unpredictable display, all of the reflections are equally and evenly pervaded by the purity and clarity of the crystal ball. So this is a perfect metaphor for the relationship between this pristine nature of mind and all of this wild display of beneficial data. So as we repeat the practice of short moments and we gain more and more assurance that open intelligence is all that there is, that nothing at all can be found to have an independent nature, separate or apart from open intelligence. No matter how real things seem, all they are are these, they're like a rainbow in space. So everything appears very vividly. You know, that thought, you're an idiot, or that thought, I love you, it seems so real. You know, it's in our face, it's there. But it's like a rainbow in the sky. It's there, it appears vividly, but there's nothing that we can hold on to. There's nothing really tangible there. Everything is this fleeting display. Everything appearing spontaneously and resolving naturally. And so with the practice of short moments we get to gain confidence and assurance that that is the actual nature of reality. That is the actual nature of our mind and the power of our mind to spontaneously create all of this incredible display is absolutely unlimited. And I know that by the wild display of my thoughts and my experience, just jumping around all over the place. But what happens is that as I begin to see that all of them are included within this vast expanse of benefit, then I can just allow everything to be as it is, without trying to struggle with things, without trying to think, oh, I, mustn't, I mustn't think that people are idiots, I've got to try and love everybody. But this is a contrived way of being. This is actually dampening down our spontaneous beneficial potency. And the more we align with open intelligence, the more everything is recognized as this display of spontaneous beneficial potency. The practice of short moments simply needs to be applied to all data, including data of insights, including the datum, even the datum, of everything is beneficial potency. Aha! I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. It's all benefit, it's all open intelligence, I've got it. It's all benefit, it's all benefit, it's all benefit. It's all... That's just totally contrived, really hard work, and you'll probably be so caught up in your thoughts about it's all benefit, it's all benefit, that you'll miss the opportunity to express your beneficial potency. So, to take short moments with insights. You might have the most incredible insight that anybody has ever had. Desperate to hold on to it. I've got it all makes sense now, suddenly I understand everything. What was it? What, I had it, I had it a minute ago, I had it, I, I knew it, I knew it. Was it gone? It's gone. And the desperate search begins for the next insight. And just relax. The insights, they will come and they will go. And like all other data streams, guess what? They arise spontaneously and self-release naturally. <coughs> like a line drawn in water. No way to hold the here and now in place. So just relax and don't even try. Because your mind is already crystal clear. Already vast and expansive. It's like a clear sky. You can't find an edge, a boundary, a beginning or an end. Your mind is wide open and clear. And that's what you come to see by participating in the Balanced View training. We have the practice of short moments. This is so powerful. Really applying this practice of the instinctive recognition of the inseparability of whatever you're experiencing from this vast openness of mind. So to recognize the natural presence of open intelligence amidst the flow of angry data is so powerful. And not only is it powerful, but it opens that data out into great wisdom. What makes me laugh is the stories I tell myself or just, just, just pop into your mind stream about all kinds of things. I was, just, I was just thinking about one incident that it happened um, it was many years ago actually and um, 
All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> it, it was actually, it was in, I had a relationship with a girl many years ago when I was, um, I don't know, late teens. And um, I, just, I just felt that it, I didn't behave very well. And, you know, I was just, like, felt bad about this relationship for years, you know, the way it had finished. And, and it, it just stayed with me for, you know, it just was just playing on my mind. Oh, God, you know, I didn't. Oh, she must think I'm just terrible and an idiot, and and I didn't like that feeling, and it, it just stayed around for a while. I mean, it wasn't there all the time. Guess what? <laughs> Came and it went, and um, and then a couple of years ago, um, I had this message on Facebook, and um, it it was from somebody who I didn't recognise their name, and. Um, they sent me this message and they said, oh, I've, I've just seen one of your talks on, online uh, and I really liked it. And I oh, great, thank you for letting me know. And she says, actually, I think when I saw the talk, I recognised you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was this girl. And I, was like, and, I, and, I, and, um, and I was like, oh, no, and it all came back. It's like... <laughs> And so I said, oh God, so all right, I better, you know, I'm going to harmonize this relationship now. <laughs> and so I, I, I wrote her just a really simple message saying, you know, it's so nice to hear from you. And, you know, I, I probably need to apologize for, you know, the way that I behaved. And, you know, I'm sorry about, you know, just a short message. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and she, I got this message back for her. And she says, I've got no idea what you're talking about. I, we just had a really nice time. <laughs> and for years, I'd had this story about what I'd said and how she'd reacted to it and how she'd probably been thinking about it for years as well. And, and she had no idea what I was talking about. But this is just a perfect example of, you know, how we can just spin off into these worlds of, of descriptions and stories. And they seem so real and we convince ourselves they're real. And, and it's the same with anger and, you know, somebody can say one thing or, or just not even do anything, just the way that they are and they make us angry or irritated and it's this huge story and what happens there when you recognize that all of that is inseparable from open intelligence then then there is this clarity around all of this data and that the power of anger becomes harnessed for the benefit of all and you become able to see clearly is this anger something that I need to do something about is this a, an issue that really needs to be addressed and you will find the power to address it clearly and directly and with incredible potency by uh, recognizing the anger as open intelligence potency. But you'll also find the clarity of knowing whether it can just be allowed to be exactly as it is. Whether it's just a, a, a passing data stream that I don't need to do anything about this. And my experience has been that most times with my anger and my irritation, there's nothing to be done with it. It's not the other person's fault. I won't claim the credit because it's not mine, but the one trainer shared brilliantly yesterday, is it the other person's fault that I have buttons that can get pushed? <laughs> Thank you, Nettie. <laughs> and so it just simplifies everything, this perspective of the inseparability of whatever you're experiencing from open intelligence. It, it makes life simple. We don't need lots of complicated descriptive frameworks concepts about everything, ideas. We, we just become more and more settled and more and more comfortable with everything. Everything about ourselves, about other people, all our imaginings. It's just all fine as it is. And the more settled we become, the more potent we become. The more relaxed we become, the more powerful we become. Because we're not distracted by all of these, just this, this grand display that when it's taken to have this independent nature, it, it just pulls us in all kinds of directions. And actually we can just stay put in open intelligence, allowing everything to be as it is and enjoying this incredible wild display that's sometimes called life. <laughs> and so it becomes enjoyable, but it also becomes naturally aligned with the benefit of all. 
and there is no need to pin down a concept on what the benefit of all is or what it looks like but it is guaranteed that as you show up more in the four mainstays in the training of balanced view you will find yourself living as the benefit of all not having even necessarily a clear idea of what it is but almost regardless of what you think and what you feel you will find yourself behaving more and more in a way that is naturally and effortlessly and spontaneously of benefit to yourself and everybody and if that sounds too good to be true or it's not your experience you just need to continue showing up and see what happens you know that's an outrageous claim incredible how dare he claim that but you you can find out whether that's true or not and every day we, we hear from people who come and share their experience of, of the benefits that they've seen. And it's these practical, tangible benefits that show us that this is actually working. That there's something to this. This is not just another nice philosophy or a, a clever idea. This is a radical shift in the way that we as individuals and as a society choose to live our lives. So this is so important. And it's great fun too.